We didn't give Drew Holiday enough love after that win over the Sixers, so we're going to do that right now. Plus, people talking some really eh, not some great stuff about Jalen Brown. Come on, folks. And should Al Horford just start always versus Philadelphia? It's all right now on the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day, and I got you every day. Free, fresh podcast dropped directly to your device. You're never going to have to pay for a Lockdown Celtics Podcast. And sometimes you're going to get it six days a week, sometimes seven days a week, because the Celtics are playing the Raptors tomorrow. By the way, you can hear that game on SiriusXM. Search for Celtics on the SiriusXM app. You can get the Sean Grandy, uh, Cedric Maxwell feed if you want that on SiriusXM. So check that out. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code LockdownNBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I should introduce myself for people who don't know who I am. If you're new to the show, I'm John Corrales. I used to play basketball a long time ago. Now I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Today I'm being joined by Tom Westerholm. How you doing, Tom? I'm good, man. How are you? I am. Ah, double thumbs up. Great. We love uh, that. We'll talk about my favorite thing in the world, post-ups. Just not, it's not posting up the way I used to be. It's almost it's almost like it should be called something else. Uh, because it's not the post-up that I remember. It's not for my youth from a long time ago. But hey. Uh I mean, I know we're gonna get into it. What it is is the perfect amalgamation of how like you and I would effectively play together in our primes. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like That's the one guy posting up, and then if the defense collapses, you got your shooty shots. So yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, we'll tell we'll give Horford a little bit more love. People saying some some stuff about Jalen doing the, oh, they did all this without Jalen. Uh well, but let, let's just start with a little bit more love for, for Drew Holiday because I think he and this all folds into the Jalen Brown absence thing. The Celtics are built to withstand the absence of a wing player, a perimeter player, I think much better than they are to withstand the loss of Porzingis, even for a game or two or however long it's going to be. Uh, by the way, Porzingis thing is not a big deal, so people shouldn't worry too much about that. But you have Holiday just kind of sitting there. You have Derek White just kind of sitting there sacrificing and not taking as many shots, being happy with, eh, you know, one day you get six shots, one day you get eight shots. But then when you need them to, Holiday can take 15 shots if he wants. Derek White can take 18 shots, 20 shots. It doesn't matter. So is it ideal to not have Jalen Brown? But no, it's not. But a guy like Holiday can can be the first over first quarter takeover guy because he has the ability to back a guy down. He has the ability to hit the shots. He can do what he did in the first quarter to kind of make up for what Jalen didn't have in the first quarter. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the, you know, this starting lineup is really well built to withstand like the law, especially the loss of like a scorer. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's just so many guys on this team that can get a bucket. They're, like you said, Drew Holiday can back a guy down. He can kick it out. He can find, you know, Derek White who can, who can hit threes and get into the paint and make floaters and who can also drive and kick. And, you know, and, and that's completely setting aside Jason Tatum, who's, you know, obviously the team's oh yeah, oh, yeah. best score and, you know, period. Like, um, you know, I think like that's, if there's anything that's one of my biggest takeaways from last night, it's just that it's like, look, this team is equipped to beat, you know, teams without, without their best players. Like this, like, I, it's funny that these, that, that this group was kind of, you know, that the uh, lack of depth was such an off season talking point. Cause that's true. Like, you know, there's not as much like proven veteran help behind these guys or what have you, but also at the same time, it's like, okay, but, the starting lineup being as stacked as it is kind of provides you with de facto depth because yep. it, as long as you surround these guys with shooters and as long as you have like a couple of guys out there who can drive and kick and all that stuff, like, okay, then, then at least 
you've got a chance to be competitive. And obviously they were, you know, competitive without two of their top scorers last night. And that was very impressive. And I thought kind of indicative of that. Yeah, that, that's right. And and we all kind of get caught up in the like linear. These are your top six guys. Then your seventh guy is Sam Hauser. And who's your eighth guy? Okay. Peyton, but then who's your not like, it, it, that's not how substitutions work in the NBA. We do it every year. And we're going to do it again next year because that's how we look at things in very linear terms. But Jason Tatum subs out at the six and a half minute mark. And maybe sometimes it's going to be with one of the guards, maybe not, however it is. But other guys stay in the game. And whoever comes in for him, uh, it's going to be uh, Sam Hauser, gets to play with starters. Yep. And that that's just, it's it should always be two or three of those guys and Al Horford yeah. who is like a sixth starter. So there is, there is depth in that one through six is all really, really good. And they can kind of, you can kind of like dial down the sliders on a couple of guys and dial up the ones on the other guys in certain situations. And in, in like this game against Philly, where you can dial up the sliders when, when one of the sliders goes away or two. Right. Exactly. And, and I mean, not for nothing, then at the start of the second quarter, when the mostly bench unit is in there, then you have Jason Tatum in there to to, to pull the slider even farther yes. in the, you know, in the right direction for the Celtics. Like that's like, like what, what a weapon, what, a, you know, because that's again, luxury. when you talk about Tatum, you're talking about a guy who can definitely collapse the defense and who can definitely post up and kick out and who can definitely, you know, run five straight pick and rolls with Luke Cornett and create four on threes. Like there's, you know, that like, yeah, there's just kind of myriad options in that way. Yeah. And, and I know this is supposed to be the, the Drew Holiday love segment, but the, the Jason Tatum, he, he is, is taking another step this year. It's really kind of fun to watch. Now I I've been, you know, somewhat critical of Tatum, not, not maybe not critical in that saying negative things, but like, critical in a critiquing sort of way that I I've, I've always kind of put him in the, it's like him and Luca to me. I've always yeah. kind of put them side by side because they're so different. They're in the same, they're in the same path. Right. But they're so different that Luca woke up and is just genetically predisposed to being an awesome basketball player. And so is Tatum, but he's had to work at a lot of things to refine a lot of skills. Like, He's not going to come in uh, from an offseason crushing six packs and just walk into a season and average 30. Like that would be a disaster for Tatum. But Luca kind of can and does just show up, not this season, but in the past, be like, yeah, I'm just going to go home and we're going to drink our big, thick, heavy beer and I'm going to come out and play myself in this shape. It's okay. So it's two different types of players, but Tatum is really starting to read the game at a higher level. And I think part of it is because Drew Holiday exists on this team and you with the spacing that's involved with Holiday uh, and Holiday kind of like initiating the offense and, and Derek White initiating the offense and all the stuff that I've, I've been saying for so long, get Tatum the, the ball on the catch with the defense already in motion. And now he can kind of survey and be like, oh, OK, I get to we're going to flow right into a pick and roll. And now. The guy that just gave me the ball, Drew Holiday, is wide open because I'm Jason Tatum and I draw all the attention. So I get it back to Holiday. Now, Holiday has a ton of room to operate. It's just that free-flowing. Maybe they're not passing the ball a ton, but they're passing the ball enough, mm -hmm. I think, to just take advantage. They don't have to be the Spurs' beautiful game to, to get all of their shots. They need maybe half of those passes because – one of those guys that's going to get the ball already has the mismatch. You don't need six passes to get it. You need two. Right. I, I, because because the thing is, like, ball movement, right, like, we generally think of that in terms of passing, but, like, ball movement is also kind of, like, the ball is moving if you collapse the defense. You know, like, like things are right. happening. There's, like, there's a dynamic element to it if you're kind of getting downhill, getting to the rim, and then, like you said, then you're kicking it out to Drew Holiday, then you're kicking it out to Tatum if you are a Drew Holiday like you know there's there's a ton of different options that way and I think that's you know to your point about like there's enough passing happening because the ball isn't stagnant the ball is moving it's just sometimes you know it's moving 
with a guy instead of, you know, right. through the air as a pass. That's right. We we see ball move. There, there's certain things that fans really latch on to, right? Because you see things at the surface level, right? You're not it's not it's not a fan's job to watch the game two, three times and break things down and you know, be a perfect, you, you, you watch the, you, you ball watch. That's what, that's what you do when you watch a game. You watch it. Did the ball go in? Did the ball not? Did, was there ball movement? Well, I don't know. I, I only saw two passes on that play. So there was no ball movement. That's the perception. The reality is drive and kick and another drive. And you know, that, that, that's, that can qualify as ball movement. Um, and, and so it, it's, it's a different kind of offense. It doesn't always result in a million assists, but you don't you don't have to with the level of talent here, even with Jalen Brown out. Let me continue this whole thing about Jalen's absence and what, what people are talking about uh, in just a second. First, today's show is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. Uh, people know me, I'm a big mental health advocate. I think uh, taking care of yourself whether it's just talking through some things or trying to really address some issues that maybe have been hanging around for a long time and maybe impacting how you handle situations. All of that stuff is very, very important. You got to find the right therapist. BetterHelp is actually going to help you do that because it's all online. You don't have to, really the hardest part is finding the person and, and you're not limited to who's in your area or whose office is near where you work. And if that person doesn't work out, now you feel especially frustrated because I don't know who to go to. BetterHelp can get you through a simple questionnaire, convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule, and then you get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch anytime without any additional charge. So it's all kind of tailored to you. Figure out who you want to talk to. If you, if it don't, if you don't hit it off, get to the next person on your schedule, on your time, over video, over phone, over text. It's all kind of flexible to be suited to you. Check this out. Really do check this out. I think it's going to be re- very helpful for a lot of people. Uh, betterhelp.com slash lockdown NBA. You can see it at the bottom of the screen on YouTube. Betterhelp.com slash lockdown NBA. You get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash lockdown NBA. Today's show also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is daily fantasy sports done. I'm sorry. No, Game Time is not daily fantasy sports. That's prize picks. That's next. (laughs) Game Time is your last minute ticket app that's going to get you the best deals on last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event. You want last minute. You figure out like, oh, this weekend, oh, they don't play on Saturday night. I didn't realize the Celtics don't play on Saturday night. Well, I'm going to go to the Game Time app. I'm going to see what shows or whatever, maybe another sporting event in your area, whatever it is, last minute, you get to see the view from your seat before you buy. You know what to expect exactly when you arrive. The all-in prices show your total uh, price up front, so you know you're getting a great deal. You're not going to go to checkout, and, and all of a sudden, the hidden fees are going to double the price of the ticket. You see it right up front, and you can buy tickets in two seconds with no taps. And with the game time guarantee, you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take out the guesswork of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Lockdown NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA. Locked L O C K E D on NBA for $20 off. Download game today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Check out something really cool that the Locked On Podcast Network has done. It's the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. You might catch Locked On Celtics on there. You'll catch Locked On NBA over there and a lot more. The Locked On Sports Today on YouTube. Subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. That is super cool all right tom um there's i've seen the comments kind of hanging around right people i don't want to overreact to comments but people are saying oh God, they, look at what they did without jalen like they closed the game without isolating look at what they did without jalen like they didn't just close out the knicks like they didn't close out the knicks the first time around like they didn't close out the miami heat in a game that jalen was heavily involved in closing the team out um i get it 
I get it. Jalen is the one guy that is not showing kind of like far and away new skills this year. And it looks like it that means he's not keeping up. Derek White looks amazing. He's he's playing great. Drew Holiday is new just because he's new, right, to, to, to us. But he's doing a lot of the things that he's always done. Yeah. Jason Tatum is playing great. He's attacking. He's He is taking a step forward for sure. And then there's Jalen. Kind of like poor, poor Jalen. He's still playing at the same, like, all NBA level that he was playing at before. Maybe a little dip in some of the percentages, but nothing crazy. You know, the turnovers are not egregious. We noticed them because we were like, oh, here goes another Jalen turnover. But it's it, nothing like – it's not like he's got eight a game. Right. You know? So I just want people to pump the brakes. Like I'm critical of Jalen Brown. I am critical of Jalen Brown. I do think he needs to be better in certain si- situations. I do think the Celtics need to find the right players around him so when Tatum goes to the bench, he can thrive. It's just, but that, that's just combinations. That's That applies to everybody except for, I don't know, LeBron and Kevin Durant and like – yeah, Jason Tatum is stepping into that realm, but everyone else, yeah, you got to have the right combination. So people need to pump the brakes on Jalen Brown a little bit. Yeah, I think if you uh, look at what the Lakers are doing right now, there's a uh, LeBron is uh, no, no longer be in the category where you can uh, have any well, right. players around. <laughs> I mean, seriously, yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no. Look, I, I mean, I think there have been a couple of games recently where I've watched Jalen and thought to myself, "This is precisely, precisely." how you should be playing basketball. Like, you know, he's had some really nice performances recently. And I think, you know, you talk about the percentages. I mean, I I, I mean, I know you fully agree with this. I mean, we're, the season is so young. Like, you know, the the Celtics, I mean, we're 11 games in now. Like, give the percentages a couple, if if that's your concern. And and I, I think some of, you know, some of the argument that I saw was, you know, stuff like, you know, just like, hey, you know, things flowed a little bit better, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, Jalen's a Jalen's a really good basketball player. Jalen is. I, I think we've seen we've seen kind of the potential. I think with him on this team recently, when, when you you know if he leads the team in scoring because he's been backdoor cutting and getting out in transition and just you know killing a team that way. I mean that like that's yet another reason that this team is really tough. It, it, is is that another reason that this team puts up a lot of points? Like, um, I I don't think. I think if if you're if you're criticizing Jalen right now, you're kind of looking for a reason to be negative about a team that has given yeah so few reasons right, right. to be negative, especially the last couple of weeks. Like, I mean, you know, the bench is playing pretty well. The the starters are killing everyone. Tatum looks like an MVP candidate. Like, you know, Jalen's been good. Derek White's been awesome. Why? Why yeah. is anybody? Compl- there's, there's so little to complain about with Marcus the Smart team right is now. gone. Marcus Smart is gone, and there's no one to focus your, your just, you know, rage on. So it's, it's Jalen. And look, Jalen, I believe has had the toughest time with, with the adjustments. Right? It's, it's, sure. it's been a little bit more of an adjustment for him, which, which is fine. He's taking two fewer shots per game, and, and I think that, it again. It's all so early. So he's shooting about 46% from the field, which is a lot less. But he's shooting 36.5% from three, which is his best best shooting season so far in three years. So he it, it, there's a balance there. His I'm um, just looking at it, his effective field goal percentage is only down by 1.5%. So it's it's two good games, and all of a sudden he's exceeding all of his uh percentages. Uh, his turnovers are down from last year, 2.5 from 2.9. So they're, they're down. Yeah. <laughs> we, we notice them. We like, it's just, um, a huge spotlight on his left hand every yeah. time he drives. And so, yeah, I get it. I understand all of that. And again, I've been one of the more vocal people because when we podcast, when we talk about this stuff, we come from an a, a, a perspective of, okay, what's perfection? What's right. an absolutely perfect game? What didn't happen that lives up to that perfection? Okay, how do they get to that perfection? That's just the way we analyze things. Right. And, and look, I mean, this is, this is an occupational hazard of getting a $300 million contract is like, you're, you're going to be really well paid and sometimes you're going to get picked apart for things a little bit. Like, you know, that's, 
you know, kind of comes with the territory there. But yeah, I mean, just to your point, like there, there's going to be a bigger spotlight on him, um, not just because of the turnovers and, you know, not just because of all that, but also because, you know, he's, a, he's you signed know, a massive contract, a huge contract. But right. all of a sudden, know. when when people get like all that much more money, they expect them to to suddenly be better at things. You can give me three hundred million dollars. I'm not getting much better as a podcaster. I kind of <laughs> topped out. Like this is about as good as it's going to get. Sadly, I would so, definitely, I would definitely get better with three hundred million dollars. I mean, I'd I wear put that clothes. out there to anybody who's anybody who's listening. I promise you, I will be a better podcaster if I make three hundred million dollars. Well, it's a nice, it's a nice try. It's a nice okay. try. All right. All right. I, I basically, I, I guess I just pissed away my chance at $300 million. I was really hoping to get, uh, get, get in that, uh, that PRI, um, podcast related income. I really wanted to, yeah. uh, I wanted yeah. my, my slice of the cake, but I know, well, I'm just going to like figure out like endorsements are just going to make up the difference for me anyway. Right. So right. that's, that's going to be how that goes. Yeah. How about one, like, uh, prize picks today's show brought to you by prize picks, our good friends over there. Now this, this is daily fantasy made fun, made easy because prize picks it's you against the projections prize picks sets the number and you say more or less than that number. You pick two to six players. You get all six players, load them up, pick the six players. You get them all right. You can get up to 25 times your money. So why not? It's basketball season. It's football season. Let's combine the two like chocolate and peanut butter. My favorite combination Get that specials league and get a combo. So, I mean, I can't use Mac Jones as an example anymore, but you can pick your favorite quarterback or your favorite receiver and their combination of touchdowns with Jason Tatum made three pointers, whatever that is, you can go more or less. And that's a way to play and have some fun. And hey, you don't have to worry about somebody getting hurt because they've got a reboot policy. So if one of your guys gets hurt in a football or basketball game and that first half does not come back in the second half, that player gets rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy. Insurance in daily fantasy. Unheard of. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA for the first deposit match up to $100. There you go. You deposit up to $100, you get up to $100 right there, right away at Prize Picks. Prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use that code locked on NBA. It's daily fantasy sports. Made easy. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On NBA after you're done here. I got the show on Wednesday with Jake Madison, but there's rotating hosts all week long. They cover the league in a fun way, an informative way. It's a great addition to the Locked On Celtics podcast. Just pair them up. You got an hour's worth of podcasts. If you got a drive to work, a drive home from work, there's your podcast. You get, you're covered. Podcast every day for you in those situations. Let's get back to the conversation here with Tom Westerholm. Uh, Al Horford was so good against uh, Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid, I don't know if you've seen this stat, has been a minus 25 six times in his career. Mm -hmm. Do you, did you see how many times that's were against the Celtics? I believe it was three, correct? Three is correct. Yeah. Yeah. Half of his minus yeah. 25s are against the Celtics. And uh, Al Horford, just figures heavily into that question here is do do you just start Horford against Philly and say hey if everybody's willing to go to the bench do you say one of these guys goes to the bench maybe it's Porzingis and you say maybe Porzingis plays in the non uh Embiid minutes in the first second third quarters you figure out the closing maybe you don't need a closing lineup uh in that situation Maybe you just for a series or a game against Philly say, hey, just for this, we're flipping. And Porzingis, you're still going to get your minutes, still going to get your touches. You're going to actually probably get much cleaner looks because you're playing against B-ball Paul and, you know, he's not going to be able to cover you. So, uh, I don't know. I, that, that's been floated. I think, I think there's merit to that. I think there is, especially when you watch last night's game and you see those guards and the way that, you know, like, I, I mean, Holiday, right? I think I promise I'll get back to Orford. Holiday. <laughs> uh, I, I thought the way that he just like backed Maxi down, the way that they attacked the Sixers guards, um, both him and White, 
I mean, that's that's pretty valuable. And yep. you add Horford to that mix and the thing, you know, the way that I mean, like, you know, you watch him beat and he's looking, he looked kind of extra pouty last night, I felt like. He and I, I thought he looked a little pouty. And, and like, it, if that's the case, Al Horford's going to have oh. like, just like everything he wants out of that matchup like it's it's you know if Embiid is is just kind of like unhappy and sulky and and not um you know not doing all the right things because you that's the thing with Horford you got to do the right things you're not going to be able to just like flop your way to you know 18 free throw attempts and look Embiid's really good at that but like Horford's pretty good at not fouling him really good at not fouling him so Embiid has taken 10 free throws combined in the two games against the Celtics I mean, your point really good. <laughs> like, yeah. And I, I think, you know, it, like if you're in a playoff series, right. And, and if everybody has said, I'll go to the bench, like it, it's, it's a tougher ask for Porzingis, especially because, you know, I think what we're like, what we're seeing is that the Celtics are establishing this, this kind of expectation. Like, okay, Porzingis is the starter. Like, you know, we, we, we roll with Porzingis yeah, as the yeah. starter. How many times on this show have we talked about how basketball players love routine, right? Like, yeah, I think, the, the the challenge is if you get the Sixers in the second round and you know you started Porzingis in the first round and then you're planning on starting him if you get to the conference finals, then asking him like, hey, can we break up your routine for a huge playoff series? Like, that's that's a little tricky to me. But at the same time, I don't know how you, I, I don't know how you bring Al Horford up. I don't know how you just you don't just directly match Al Horford's minutes with Joel Embiid just based on literally everything like. <laughs> Based on Joel Embiid's entire career, I don't know how you how, how you go away from that. The evidence is there, and yeah. what you do is you say to Porzingis, "Hey, man, we love you. This is not a demotion. This is a matchup in a playoff series. This is the matchup. Mm-hmm. We believe that the best chance we have to win is Horford, who has been awesome against yeah. Embiid. Let's let's roll with that. Yeah. If it and doesn't think- work." Then you try now. Now the counterpoint to that is, don't pre-adjust, right? Don't pre-adjust. You go in there, yeah. And right. See if your your matchup works, because you can do other things. You can try the uh, holiday on uh, Embiid thing. You can try that again. You can try some zone. You can do other things. Yeah. And then say, let's not shoot this shot until we absolutely need to. Uh, certainly has merit. Seven games, a long series. Sure. Um, you could find other ways to win and bead could go off and you could just like, all, if you can contain maxi, which they've really struggled to do through a lot of these first two games, uh, then yeah, then fine. But there, there's something to that. There's something to that. And, and, and I think that's going to be a discussion that kind of goes back and forth. Um, and each side, each side has a point. Yeah, I mean, I think the way that like an easy sell, right, is like, hey, Chris Dabbs, are you trying to win a title? Because like, I think we're all here to try to win sure. a title, right? Okay, winning the title means getting through this team, and this is the way that we know we can get through this team. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, like there's a there's a pretty strong case to be made there. It's like, look, this is not a demotion for you. This is nothing against you. It's just we know that if we stop Joel Embiid, we're going to win this series, and yeah. we have the guy who can stop Joel Embiid. And sorry, man, he plays your position. So yeah, like, no, right. You know, like we'll play a lot of double big. We'll do all that blah, 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 blah. blah. Like, you know, I think when you start talking about closing lineups, I think that's when you probably are looking at, you know, either either white or holiday coming out, like maybe being on the bench a little bit during during a closing lineup um, against the Sixers if everybody's healthy. But yeah, like, I don't know if if you're Porzingis, I think it'd be pretty hard not like to, you know, I, I think I think it would be much easier to accept like, hey, I'm coming off the bench if it's handed to you as like. Okay, this is this is just like a guaranteed win. We know right. we're winning if we do this. The answer, the answer to this is is Joe Mazzulla, yeah. And how we'll fold in the Minnesota performance? The Minnesota performance was indicative. Like he is the first person to tell you, I did not use Porzingis correctly. Mm-hmm. If they can use Porzingis now, maybe it is a double big situation. Maybe you just start double big, and and you know Derek White comes off the bench or or whatever. That's that's fine as well. There's there are multiple ways you can do this, but what we don't want to take away is the post ups because the Celtics have succeeded excessively on these post ups. They have uh, Holiday spent the entire first quarter backing his way down to the hoop. Uh, Tatum 
has gotten uh, not only has he just found mismatches, the Celtics are running creative plays to make sure that, you know, oh, they're switching. Let's run this weak side three man action to get Tatum all of a sudden cutting to the opposite block. And oh, there's Tyrese Maxey on him. Oh, well, how did that happen? <laughs> so you, you're, they're doing a really good job of getting Tatum into those post up situations. So, uh, and, and that's needless to say, like Porzingis, if you don't start against Embiid or if you start double big, Porzingis will get post up. You know, you want to make sure you get those as well. So, how, in, uh, how Joe Mazzula kind of runs his offense, does he involve Porzingis now? Does he adjust from, does he learn from that, uh, that Minnesota game and say, okay, we've got to make sure that Porzingis is not just spaced out in the corner. Al Horford can space to the corner. Porzingis has to be in the action. Porzingis has to be at the top. If you're going to play him on the floor with Embiid, he needs to make sure Embiid is up doing stuff. And then you say, oh, well, if Embiid's going to still drop against Porzingis, well, now you've got him shooting three-pointers. And go ahead, have fun with that. So it's it's a coaching adjustment as well. So it's not as simple as saying, Horford plays well against Embiid, which he absolutely does. You can do all this other stuff a little nuanced and say, well, yeah, we also have a guy that's a huge mismatch problem. And if he starts hitting, if Porzingis hits two, three, three pointers at the beginning of the game, who now what's, what's Embiid going to do? Guess who's going to be further out in the perimeter. And now everything's open. Now you're getting to the rim with Embiid on the floor and without Embiid on the floor. That is, is that there's merit there as well when you're considering how to match up. Yeah. And, and like, not for nothing, the, the Sixers are not the only team that have, you know, that are going to run into that massive issue playing against the Celtics team. Like, right. you know, like it, obviously it, it kind of neutralizes a lot of the NBA. I mean, like, I think those, 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 post-ups like they're they're so such a great way to you know either engage and bead so that you can then kick it out to your shooter or such a great way to like you know like like uh to, to space the floor i mean like the sixers neutralizing and bead is important obviously especially on the defensive end but the sixers are not the only team that are that have that have that issue to deal with um this yeah it's a it's a team after your heart corrales i love game. it i love it it's not it's not the dump it into kevin McHale. And no. watch him dance. No, it's, it's modern. It's the it's, it's modern. It's, it's a modern, modern post ups. Yep. It's it's a dip a shoulder into the guy and do like Drew Holiday did. Start <laughs> two feet inside the three point line and end up under the basket and just yeah. back a guy down. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, I feel like the you know that like I feel like part of the reason it's not it, it's it's a more modern version is because it's, it's actually there to, to create a pass, right? Like yeah. most of these post-ups are not actually there to, 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 to get the bucket. I mean, holiday will take the little, the little layup. If, if Maxie's going to, you know, sure. be the only guy who's there, but, or, you know, Tatum will, will, you know, occasionally spin and, you know, get a layup. But generally speaking, I mean, we're not, we're seeing some shots, but I feel like much more often we're seeing the kick out. That's a result of the defense being like, God, fine. I will yeah. come in and defend you. <laughs> The whole thing, it's 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 back to it's still modern basketball. It's just a paint touch. Yeah, like that's stop, what it is. That's stop what it is. looking at it as a post up. Yeah, and call it a paint touch because that's really what it is. Just a different way to get it. And because you're it, the the whole switching defenses is that gave birth to the re, the the post up that that the the return of the post up because everybody was switching and you go well what now these guys have have smalls on them you you know you get a guard on you you just take them into the post and because now that demands help now you can pass out of that that's why you want tatum and holiday and porzingis because of his just gigantic size those are the guys you want posting up that's those are the guys that buck the traditional post up numbers because they can pass out of those situations and so the points per possession after a post up are high with these guys because it draws in the help and it opens things up it's all about joe mazula is all about creating mismatches creating your two on ones your your three on twos and that's what the post up does so it's it's i'm i'm just i love i'll go back and just watch 
Mikhail and watch. Oh, Hakeem Olajuwon, the dream. Oh, my God, the footwork. It's ballet. It's just amazing to watch. But that's not what this is. And that's not what it should be, you know? And I'm even I, as an old head and an old post-up fanatic myself, um, I know that that's not what this is. So, I mean, you can you can learn a little bit like, hey, let's get an up and under. Let's, let's work a yeah. little bit there. So you have a couple of weapons in there, but that's not what it is. It's not what it should be. It's a modern version of posting up. You know, it's like... Uh, it's like watching one of those cooking shows and someone takes a modern twist on pot roast. And it's like, this ain't pot roast. This is just some like fancy thing on a plate, but whatever. Anyway. Yeah. It's like, it's like shooters. It's like, you know, Michael Jordan shot a lot of, you know, shot a lot of range shots. Yeah. Like he'd probably shoot a lot more threes in the modern game. And absolutely. You know, what would Larry Bird do in today's NBA? <laughs> 15 three pointers a game. Yeah, absolutely. He had Bill Fitch screaming at him. Don't shoot any threes. And today it'd be like, shoot nothing but threes. Yeah, Missoula would be yelling at him for literally doing anything but shoot threes. Yeah. I mean, come on. Sure. All right, Tom. Appreciate you being here. Of course, man. Appreciate you. And I appreciate all of you regular listeners, you regular everydayers, Monday through Friday, every day you're with me. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I'm here for you on a, a just a, a daily basis. And then Toronto Friday night, I got a bonus podcast for you after the Toronto game, which is an in-season tournament game. So check that out wherever you get your podcast. You can always listen to these games when the Celtics play on the SiriusXM app. Just search for Celtics and you can get the Sean Grandy, uh, Cedric Maxwell call on the SiriusXM app, the SXM app. So go search that there. Uh, and as always, I would love for you to go check out the new Locked On Sports Today, the first ever 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. That is a great place to go next. Uh, just kind of have it on because it's just like, you remember the days of ESPN where you just turn it on and leave it on and you just get all the big stories in sports? That's what this is. So put it on, leave it on, and have some fun there. And of course, I would love all of you every day, as all you regular listeners to share the podcast, share this podcast, tell your friends, spread the word, tell everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast it's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.